time ago in Kubernetes. Probably. This was probably the first major um, rem API removal event that happened uh, in Kubernetes. And so, and, and it impacted everyone because it was on deployments and, um, you know, very basic resources that we all use. And so we had this task of upgrading, I think at the time, 70 some odd clusters to 1.16. And we had customers deploying into those clusters across you know many different companies. And we said, all right, we have got to figure out a way to show them where in their cluster they, they're using these deprecated API versions, where they're deploying them in the code. Because Kubernetes will handle translating them up to the newest version, but if they go to run their, you know, kubectl apply on a YAML file that has a removed version, it's going to fail after this. And so we said, well, what, how, how can we do this? And so that's why we wrote Pluto. Uh, and Pluto is designed to very quickly and easily show you where you might be using deprecated API versions in your cluster. Now, I, I see that it like touches on this a little bit in here, but maybe just from your lips directly, uh, talk about why why there's a need for Pluto. Like, why can't you just query the API server for deprecated or removed APIs? Yeah, great question. So, you know, we dug into this a lot when we first wrote Pluto because we were like, well, maybe we can just, you know, write a quick bash script that calls kubectl and checks for all these old API versions. And what we discovered at the time and is now I think more common knowledge and better understood by more users of Kubernetes is that the API server is really smart in that it translates between API versions that are compatible in order to create a seamless experience. And so when I say to the, the, the Kubernetes API server, kubectl get deployments, I'm asking for a specific API version, perhaps apps v1, or maybe I'm, you know, I have an outdated version of kubectl and for some reason I'm still asking for uh, de um, apps v1 beta one or I think deployments may have been an extension. This is a long time ago at this point. But anyway, um, and the API server will tell me whatever API version I ask for, regardless of how it was deployed to the cluster. So there is no record of what version was actually used to deploy into the cluster in the beginning. And so we said, all right, where can we find this information? And the first thing, because we use Helm, basically to deploy everything into our clusters, the first thing that came to mind was Helm. Because when you do a Helm, um, a Helm install, it creates a release object in the cluster that contains the actual YAML manifests that were applied to the cluster as part of that Helm install. And so we said, well, great, we can just parse those manifests, look for these deprecated API versions, and then uh, surface them up. And so that was the very beginning of Pluto was just looking at Helm charts. And of course, if we're looking at YAML files, we can just scan static YAML files. That was like table stakes for the tool. So that was the first thing we did. Um, and so that got us around the, um, the um, API server translation layer. Okay. And um, so I, I know we're about to get into an, like an actual demo to sh see how Pluto works, but there was a question about whether or not you can run Pluto against the cluster. Uh, and mm -hmm. the answer is yes. Yes, you can. Definitely. Uh, so uh, we're going to demonstrate the, I think there's like three different ways um, that we, uh, that you can use Pluto. And Andy's going to demonstrate that now. Yeah, definitely. So I will also address this question a little bit further because the, um, they mention uh, dumping the YAML from the cluster and running Pluto against that YAML. The problem with that is that any tool that dumps the YAML out of the cluster is going to run into that API translation problem exactly the same. So if I kubectl get deploy in all namespaces as YAML, this is gonna come back with the current API version regardless of how I deploy it to the, to the cluster. Uh, and so, which is why we have to go either back to our CI where we're in, you know, actually deploying these things, our infrastructure is code and use Pluto there or run it against Helm charts or we'll talk about another thing here in a minute. Um, but you know, the very first thing we'll do is uh, I'm just going to, um, I'm gonna create a temporary directory here. Uh, and I'm going to go into it. And then I'm going to pull down a Helm chart and I'm going to template that out uh, into some YAML files. So I'm going to run the Helm template command. Um, and then 
I'm going to, and that set doesn't really matter. And then we use a tool called kubectl slice just to pull that out into several, several YAML files instead of one big YAML file. So what I have here now is what you might have if you're not using Helm in like a, a GitOps repository or an infra's code repository, or maybe, you know, an application deployment directory inside your application, right? It's a deployment YAML a PDB YAML, a service, and, a, and an HPA. So, um, you know, we can take a quick look at these and see some fairly, fairly familiar objects, right? We have a kind API version and these things. So we're gonna run Pluto detect files on this current directory. And it's just gonna very quickly go through all those files and find any, um, any API versions that are either deprecated or removed. It's probably a good time to differentiate between these two, um, I think. So um, an API is marked as deprecated long before it gets removed. And there's a policy for this in the Kubernetes code base um, that talks about the rules about how things have to be deprecated. You can find that in our docs at uh, pluto.docs.fairwinds.com. There's a whole site, there's a link out here to the Kubernetes deprecation policy. Um, and so what we see here is we have some objects that are deprecated in a specific version and removed in a later version. This piece is the part that's troublesome, right? A deprecated API is just a warning. And now with the newer versions of Kubernetes, it'll warn you when you deploy these objects. It'll say, hey, this version is deprecated. It's going to be removed later. What it doesn't do is tell you that ongoing over time. Um, so, um, uh, so we have here, you know, what version has been deprecated? What replaces it? So we have our HPAs at V2 beta one being replaced by V2. It is deprecated, has not been removed yet. And uh, what we're comparing that against is a specific version that we passed in. Um, so, um, we, there's a default version that we're targeting at any given time and that can be found in the repository. Um, but you can override that by saying target versions equals Kate's equals V1 dot, say we're upgrading to 21, right? Um, so we would see that our PDB deprecated in 1.21, removed in 25. Uh, and now the HPA doesn't show up anymore because it's not deprecated until 1.22. So we don't even need to worry about it until we get there, right? Or if we're targeting a later version, we'll see different results. So that's the very basic detect files command uh, and a little bit of the options that we can do. Awesome. All right, what uh, should I do next? Uh, let's do in cluster. In cluster. All right. So like I said, we, we can look at Helm charts. So we, I already showed this, but we have several Helm charts in this cluster that have been deployed, which means you know all of those manifests live in the release objects um, in the cluster. So we can really, if we were super curious, you know, we can take a look at all the secrets in the cluster, grab for Helm and see we have all these Helm releases. If you really wanted to pull one of these out, I think it's a... Uh, uh, double base 64 encoded tarball, uh, if I remember correctly, that's stored in there. It's uh, and not fun to get out manually, but uh, the Helm libraries make that very easy. Um, so we'll just run the, the, the command Pluto detect Helm. Uh, I'm gonna pass that O wide flag again, because I like seeing the full output. output. And actually, since we've deployed the demo app into the cluster via Helm, the same one that we templated out locally, we're seeing the exact same results. It's just that these came from the cluster. So we see what namespace they're in um, and, and a little bit more information about them because they've actually been deployed. If you remember from my Pluto detect files command, we did not have a namespace. And then we just have this generic release name because this has been Helm templated out. Um, so that's the only real differences there. And, uh, and then there's a way to actually also um, scan upstream charts um so like not uh, so like actually template a, a chart that you haven't deployed and that you don't have locally right yeah yeah so um essentially what we did uh so like 
say I have this, this demo app deployed. I know it has a deprecated version in it. I'm not sure if the new version has resolved this or not. So I'm gonna run a Helm search repo, Fairwinds incubator, basic demo, um, and see the latest version of this chart. Um, oh, that is the latest version of this chart. Well, say there was a later version of this chart and I wanted to see if it, uh, if it didn't have, if it had the uh, deprecated version in it still. I could use Helm template uh, on that chart, the latest version of it. And then I can just pipe that straight into Pluto. We have a detect command. And then we give it the dash uh, convention for standard in. So we're just gonna pipe it straight through. And then we're gonna do O wide. And we're gonna see it just scan those YAML files on the fly. So if you wanted to use Helm template or maybe you're using customize or JSON it, I don't know. If, I mean, yep, it has to spit out YAML eventually. There's no reason it wouldn't work, right? Um, so um, yeah, that's the, the easy way to get just straight from standard in, in to pipe through Pluto. Okay. And uh, I saw, so we can obviously um, specify which version of Kubernetes we want to check against. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, here with uh, checking the upstream, you just got the latest version of your chart. Um, can you check, I mean, can you specifically say which version of a chart you want to check against though as well? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's built into Helm. So that would be, uh, we'd give it a dash dash version and presumably 0.5.0 exists because we're on 0.5.1. And Helm will template out, go get that other version of the chart right. and spit that out. So no big deal there, relatively cool. straightforward. That's pretty customizable then, so. Yeah, nice. lots of different ways to run it. So yeah, so this is all like command line stuff um, that you can run from you know your computer. Um, mm -hmm. How do you, like, can you integrate this into your uh, CI CD so that it can detect the stuff before you even uh, push it to your cluster? Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, you know, the two methods, methods that we just showed, detecting files or detecting Helm, um, will work in your CI because they're just against local files or templated out Helm charts. Um, so the nice thing that we do provide in order to make that a little bit easier, you may have noticed my terminal is giving you this little red X every time we run this. And that's because the previous exit code was non-zero. Um, so if I Helm detect files OI, and I um, look at the exit code of that command, it has exited two. And what that indicates is that there are deprecated versions, but not removed versions. If there were removed API versions in that, it would also, it would exit three. Um, so if you want to exit on, you know, just all failure scenarios, great, just do that. And then um, fail your build and don't allow any deprecated versions. But if you want to fine grain tune that to, just give me just fail if we have removed versions from the API, then we can just check for exit code three. Um, and there's flags to um, uh, to define that behavior. So if we look at the help output, uh, we have only show removed, um, which will you know as it says only show us removed. Uh, and then we can also change the exit code behavior. Uh, so if we want to just have it only exit non-zero if removed APIs are found, we can pass this ignore deprecations flag. And if we want to only, for some reason, check for deprecations and not removals, we could ignore removals. Um, seems like a little bit weird to me, but I'm sure there's a, a use case out there I haven't thought of. Um, so yeah, that would be how you would run that in CI. And then, you know, if you've got Helm charts or whatever, just, you know, Helm template them, pipe them through Pluto Detect or template them to a local directory or anything like that. And we've also had somebody, um add a, a GitHub action um, for this, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, uh, we don't use, um, can't, can't talk and type. Um, uh, we don't use GitHub actions much here at Fairwinds, um, but uh, we did have a community user um, submit a GitHub action. Uh, we also have a Circle CI orb, if you're familiar with the Circle CI ecosystem. Um, for running Pluto against your code. Um, so I think it's uh, in the GitHub action folder. Uh, we have a relatively straightforward action that um, downloads the image, or, um, yeah, downloads the image for Pluto and then allows you to run that against your, um, 
in your code. So um, you can definitely pull that in from our repository. It's not really like fully supported by us because it was community contributed, but definitely welcome, you know, any PRs on around any issues or enhancements that want to be made to that. Um, so I guess the, the last thing that I think we should cover is, uh, so we have Pluto going out and making these determinations about what's removed, what's deprecated, but like where, how is Pluto determining that? Where is it getting that information? Great question. So um, we went back and forth on this a lot um, because um, at the time, deprecations were listed in the um, in the the API spec for Kubernetes. So an API version for each like there's a there's a full open API spec for every version of Kubernetes. And you can get that from the cluster, kubectl looks at it um, and things like that. And so we wanted to use that. We were like, maybe we can just generate the version on the fly. But at the time, deprecations and APIs were only intermittently listed in the spec and only in like a comments section. There was no defined specification in the API for deprecations and removals. I believe that has since changed because that's how kubectl is giving you warnings about version deprecations now. Um, but we have until this, like up till now and, and for the foreseeable future made the determination that there are not enough deprecations for us to not just keep doing what we're doing, which is to maintain a static list. So if you go to the API or if you go to the Pluto repository, um, and we, you take a look here, you'll see all the version deprecations going back to 1.16 uh, and going forward to, at this point, 1.25. I think we're due for a re-up on some of these um, just to make sure that we're up to date, but we always accept issues and pull requests to update this list as folks find things. Um, and so if, if we look through this, we'll see like each section is really just a, you know, the component is Kubernetes. It's the API version that was deprecated, um, what kind that applies to, because like it, within networking.case.io v1 beta one, there may be multiple types of objects, specifically like here we see there's an ingress and an ingress class. So each object and version pair has to be a separate entry. Uh, and then what version it was deprecated in, what version it was removed in, and then what replaces it. Uh, and so that's where Pluto's pulling its information. Um, and in addition to like people being able to make contributions to this, there's a way that folks can also just check for API versions that's not in versions.yaml, right? Like, so yeah, definitely. Um, so if you take a look at the help again, um, you can pass in an additional versions file, um, which has to be in the format of this file, um, right? So you can add additional deprecated versions. Um, and, or the, yeah, you pass in the file name basically. Uh, and it will essentially append that to the existing list of versions uh, before it runs. So if, say you have like an in-house CRD, uh, something like that, that you've been versioning and you wanna be able to detect that, you can totally go ahead and do that um, on the fly. If it is a, you know, core API version or a very, very commonly used API version, we definitely encourage you to make a pull request back. Um, yeah. Super happy to accept those. You may have noticed we, we had had some contributions to non-core Kubernetes API versions. Um, so, you know, very well-known cert manager API deprecation that happened in the past uh, was added to Pluto um, for the, um, for deprecating the acme.certmanager.io APIs. Um, and so we've, we've enabled different components as well. So like here, the component is cert manager and it has the same format. And we also have some for Istio in here. Our main focus is on Kubernetes, uh, the core, but we are also welcome, you know, happy to accept very well-known APIs, especially in the, you know, the larger projects out there that, that change frequently. So. Um, and we have one more question uh, about uh, Pluto, um, question you're familiar with. Uh, <laughs> any plans in the future for Pluto to support running against the cluster for resources that weren't deployed with help? You want me to answer or you want to? Because I know you know the answer. <laughs> uh, I, I do know the answer. Um, 
but you answer. Okay, so <laughs> from the very beginning, there has been a, um, let me see if I can get the, the command right here. But um, so there is an annotation that gets applied to certain Kubernetes, to some Kubernetes objects when you run the, an effective kubectl apply command. And what it does is it annotates the object with a previously, uh, a previous, the name it just escaped me, um, a last applied configuration. Last applied configuration annotation, which contains a stringified version of the YAML shoved into the annotation to show you know, the, the last applied configuration. Um, and so there has, and, and that will contain the original API version that was used to apply the object. Um, so let's see if we can take a look at that. Um, I don't have any right now. I would have to probably kubectl apply some things. Um, but anyway, as you can see, that annotation doesn't always exist. It's not consistent across any method of deployment. If you do a kubectl replace, if you do a kubectl patch, uh, that annotation will just get blown away and removed. And so while it's not consistent, because it's not consistent, we pushed back from the beginning on using this as a source of truth because we wanted to be uh, thorough and not incomplete in the information we were returning to users. Uh, we have since uh, had a change of heart and will be probably merging a PR uh, from a community member to support the last applied configuration annotation uh, with a new command. Uh, so the key will be, it will be a specific command to detect last applied configuration. I don't remember the actual command name. Um, and in the documentation, it will come with the caveat that like, this may not find all of your API versions, but I think we came to the conclusion that some is better than none. And so um, let's just go ahead and support it. So um, I know there are some folks out there who will be very happy to hear that. And <laughs> Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I feel like we have done uh, a pretty good job of Pluto, and maybe it's time to move on to Nova. Um, I think so. I do have an important question that I forgot to ask you at the beginning of our talk, though. Um, and that question is, uh, what did the SQL statement say before entering the restaurant? I don't know. Can I join you? Oh, <laughs> nice. Where do you get these? <laughs> huh. All right. Now All right. we're going to talk I, about Nova. <laughs> well, I did just remember one thing that I find super handy on occasion because every now and then somebody asks me, hey, is this API version deprecated? And I go, I don't know. But I have this handy Pluto list versions command always ready in my terminal that will show me all the deprecations and all the removals that are listed in Pluto. And with a handy little grep, I can quickly say, yes, that version has been deprecated and it will be removed in this, in this version of Kubernetes. So uh, nice little thing, especially if you want to look smart to your friends when they ask you. If my friends ask me about API version deprecations in Kubernetes, yeah. I might have to get upset, but uh, you should anyway. Get new friends. <laughs> I should get new friends. <laughs> Maybe find some friends outside of work. Yeah, um, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So yes, we can totally talk about Nova. <laughs> All right. So Nova, let's uh, let's do our, our same dance. Let's talk about what it is and why does it exist? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, same history of the company. Obviously, I don't have to go through that again. We've run a lot of clusters. Uh, one of the things that we find is we run a lot of add-ons in our clusters, right? Like external DNS, cert manager, ingress nginx, metric server, all the stuff that you have to make use to make Kubernetes fully functional. And we tend to install that with Helm charts. And what we found was sometimes it's hard to know if there's another, a new chart available or if we're out of date or whatever. And how do we, you know, do that at scale? And how do we report that information somewhere else so that we can gather all in one place and look across all of our clusters and see where we're running what versions of things? And so Nova was an, you know, an obvious uh, tool for us to build. And cool. so what it does is it shows you, <coughs> excuse me, if there are updates to your Helm charts. And it's wonderfully simple. It is. 
It is fantastically simple. Uh, I do believe we have a bug out there to put the default format back to table because it had gotten made Did JSON at that? some point. Yeah. And so you do have to pass the format table flag at this time. Hopefully that will be fixed. Um, but it's relatively straightforward output. We see a release name, what version is installed, what the newest version is, and then a Boolean flag that says, is your current version the newest version? And then there's also this, uh, I feel like little known um, feature of Helm charts that they can be deprecated. Um, so you can mark a Helm chart as deprecated in the actual chart spec itself. And so Nova will detect that and tell you if it's been deprecated, uh, which I think is super handy. Deprecated is like uh, what happened when all the charts moved out from underneath that one uh, hmm. repo, right? Like the stable got, repo. The stable repo, a lot of them got deprecated and moved somewhere else. So that's like a handy way for you to know you need to change. Your right. Stream. Yeah. Yes. Cool. That was the one time I've seen that used uh, <laughs> quite a bit. Uh, I'm glad you explained the old flag too, because I was kind of like looking at it and I was like, it seems kind of obvious to me if installed is <laughs> you know earlier than latest and old but yeah that would be a good hand a handy thing to use if you're like writing a script of some kind probably right yeah so i mean if you wanted to like do this uh, you know get this back as an object much easier to just grab the outdated from the json object and say see if it's true or false rather than having to do semver comparison on your own right. um yeah. because you know semver comparison is never fun ever oh i know uh, <laughs> i know you know <laughs> um uh yeah so that's the the absolute basics of the nova um nova command so much like pluto though where is it getting the information about um the possible upgrades like where is it getting this information about the versions that are available how's it how's it grabbing that good question good question There we go. There is also a wide output. It will give you a little bit more information about where it's deployed, namespace, chart name, that kind of stuff. So just want to throw that out there. So to answer your question, um, where does it get its information? So by default, we have started polling the Artifact Hub. So if you're not familiar with Artifact Hub, um, Artifact Hub is a place where you can list your Helm repository and thus all the charts in it for the public to consume. So for example, uh, if we go take a look at Fairwinds, uh, we can see like the Goldilocks chart is uh, listed here and all the versions are listed here as well. So we've added functionality to Nova to by default look in Artifact Hub. Now, there's a couple caveats that I think people should know about this. First, a lot of people tend to fork charts, which is fine, right? They're open source, forking charts is good. But what happens is that a lot of times people, folks will fork a chart and then somehow it gets listed in an artifact hub. But the chart.yaml is exactly the same between the fork and the original. And so now Nova has no way of um, differentiating between those two to know is that the upstream chart for the release that's installed in my cluster? And that's exacerbated by the fact that when you do a Helm install from a public repository like that, the URL of that repository is not stored inside the release object anywhere. There's no source of truth for where this chart came from. Um, this is actually a feature that we're working on getting added to Helm. And I think a lot of different projects are gonna benefit from this, but it's, it's still in the works. It's obviously not gonna be in your clusters now. Um, and so what we do is a little bit of uh, fancy uh, matching and scoring. And so basically if there's like four charts that all look exactly the same, we have a few different criteria that we evaluate them against, um, against your chart and then score them and try to find the best match. I find that Pluto does, or Nova currently does a pretty darn good job of that. It's not always perfect. And um, so I think it's just an important thing for folks to, to note. Um, and does Nova only support Helm charts? No, great question. As of recently, we have expanded beyond Helm because we recognize that not everybody uses Helm. Uh, we said, you know, Nova finds outdated Helm charts. What, what if it just looked for Docker containers that were out of date? Because that would be a decent indicator if your application's out of date, you don't know 
uh, you know, there's a new version of the container available. Well, maybe I should go look and see if there's, you know, I need to update my YAML or something like that. So we added the uh, containers functionality. So if we do our Nova find formats table wide, and then we pass the containers flag, instead of looking for Helm charts and pulling artifact hub and all that good stuff, we're gonna look through all of the images in your cluster and then look for updated versions of those. Mm -hmm. So here we see all of our kates.gcr.io images. Uh, even the control plane ones are a little out of date because I'm running kube 1.23, but obviously there's a 1.25 available because that just dropped you know, like a month ago or whatever um and has already been patched once and so um those containers are available we also see kind of similar output here the cert manager controller i'm on 1.8.2 there's a 1.9.1 available and that's actually reflected here in the helm chart output but if i had installed cert manager some other way i would still be seeing this output same for external dns here uh similar thing obviously the version numbers are off because the chart doesn't track the um the versions of external dns necessarily um, and accordion S is a, a core component, obviously, clearly. So, uh, metric server here as well, similar output. That's, that's very, that's very cool. Um, and I, I had a question that I just answered, uh, by looking at the, the super, um, uh, the super wide <laughs> format of this, the, the latest versus latest minor versus latest patch, like that clarified that up for me because obviously it shows you what the latest like full version is versus your current version and then the latest minor is obviously the the second uh field there and the latest patch is what's the latest patch version for the version you're running right exactly and the reason we did that is because you know you find an out-of-date container you go oh i should update that but like if i'm on version zero and they're on version 12 major versions i don't necessarily want to just go flip the switch to go straight to 12 you know, right. it's probably gonna break something. Um, but we, so we thought folks might wanna see, you know, the, the newest patch version. So like, hey, I could probably reasonably very safely go and just apply all these patch versions directly to what all of my container images and be fairly safe. Or if I'm, you know, a little more risk tolerant and I wanna just try out the new, the new minor version, I can do that, or we can just jump straight to latest. So we give all three outputs in order to um, kind of ease the, the burden of making updates. And so we've seen definitely um, situations where clients have um, wanted to stick, even like not cared about moving up to the latest version or a, a you know a later version of um, a container image because there's something incompatible with what they're with what they're running, right? They're like, we have to stick here for now because we can't change it. Um, so we don't care about this and we don't want this noise. Is there a way to like um, configure Nova to be like? I only care about, you know, container versions, this to this, and I'm not going above this version. So don't tell me about it. Yes, there is. I believe it's available for containers. It's definitely available for Helm charts. Okay. Um, so there is a config file. Um, and I believe it's, uh, hang on, I got Nova, there it is. So you can generate a config file on the fly. Um, by saying dash dash config nova example dot yaml. And I think that might actually work with JSON as well if you want to uh, export it as JSON. Um, so that it detects the file format and generates the type that you, you specify. I think it works with uh, YAML, JSON, and maybe even INI for some reason. I don't know. Um, but uh, this is the config. And so what we see here specifically the desired versions map. And so what we can do, um, actually, let's let's go ahead and pop open a second terminal here. Um, and just run our Nova find command. So specifically for Helm charts. Uh, uh, we can say, for example, I'm happy with cert manager v1.8.2. I don't want to go above that. So we can do a nova find config nova example.yaml dash dash 
format table. And we will see. Oh, did I type the wrong version? I did. Um, one that I got too. We'll see cert manager drop off this list and say it's no longer old. We're not out of date anymore. It will essentially pin the latest version of that chart to v1.8.2 as specified here. So if I have like a predefined set of standards that I want to compare to, we can definitely do that here. I don't know how that plays with containers. Say more. <laughs> I haven't tested this desired versions at all. It works with containers. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so let's try it. Let's uh, throw in a desired version for the Quay.io Jetstack cert manager image and pin that to v1.8.2. See if that changes our output. It does not. So that that desired version section of the config only applies to um yeah okay to helm charts so that actually might be a, a worthwhile issue to open so. um and then also in this file so this this is the config file so you can also uh use this to like what if you don't want to i see you have a poll artifact hub um key here and the value set to true can you can set that to false and then like do what Ah, good question. So if I just set that to false and I run a Nova find, we're going to get an error. We should get an error or we'll get nothing. Um, yeah, I don't think you, didn't you have to uh, specify the config? Oh, thank you. I was like, why is that not showing up? Did I find another bug live on the... <laughs> um, live on the, uh, there we go. So we'll get an error. It says uh, requires URLs to be provided to the URL. So what this does, if you don't want to pull Artifact Hub and see um, see the uh, um, all the charts from Artifact, like have it look for charts and go search for them. Say you have a lot of charts and you know you're running into rate limiting issues from Artifact Hub because that happens. Um, you can instead specify specify a list of specific Helm repo URLs. Uh, so if I wanted to put the uh, URL um, https colon slash slash charts dot fairwinds dot com slash stable. Actually, let's do an incubator because I know I have an incubator chart in here. Um, now it will only look upstream for charts in that Helm repository. So if you only want to check, like if you, you want to, um, it, it's also additive. So it'll also search Artifact Hub and your URLs if you want. Um, so you can search, you know, Artifact Hub as well as all of your private Helm repos that you have associated. Oh, um, cool. So uh, that is definitely an option. Okay. Um, we have a question um, about this config file. What is mm -hmm. that containers false config for? Um, so that, so containers, because the Nova find containers flag is just a Boolean flag. When we pass dash dash containers, we're implying dash dash containers equals true. Um, we can, if we're, say we want to run this in CI and we don't want to pass flags, we want to pass a config instead. I could say containers true here and then Nova find config Nova example.yaml and it will search for containers automatically from that config. So basically anything that's a command line flag is also configurable in the config. Uh, under the hood, we're using Cobra and Viper to essentially bind all of the flags that we pass to config values. So they are one-to-one. Uh, -one. So when you do that Nova generate config, it's basically going to generate a config with all the flags available to it. So you can control any behavior here um, via the config file. Cool. 
Um, okay. Um, anything that you feel like we didn't cover here that we should uh, talk about? Just a quick note about the containers functionality. Um, it is very common for containers to be tagged with a non semver compliant string. Uh, and this causes problems for Nova, right? Because we, it's very hard to compare a non semver string to another non semver string and figure out if there's a new version of a container available. What we typically do is make a best effort. So if there's a semver contained within the string, we will parse that and try and find the new version. Where this frequently runs into problems is if you're running multiple architectures. So, if, or if you're publishing multi-arch containers, a lot of folks will publish a v1.1.1 dash AMD64. That's not a valid semver string. There is actually a valid semver way to do to express that information, and we should probably all start adopting it. But until then, we will let Nova will likely recommend v1.1.2 and redact the, the, uh, the um, dash AMD64 or the dash ARM64 or whatever it is you're passing. So you do have to sort of use your best judgment with these image recommendations and say, okay, the, the old one was an ARM image. The new recommendation is for a new tag. Maybe I should go check and see if there's an ARM image for the new tag or whatever it is you're doing. So uh, we make a best effort to parse the semver, but we don't always. There's also a flag to show non semvers that are found and also errors that occur. Like if we find a container and we can't get to the repo or something like that, you can definitely, um, you know, show those flags. So, cool. Okay. So, yeah. So we have talked about two uh, super useful um, open source projects that we do. Um, so we have Pluto that will help you detect um, deprecated or removed API versions in your cluster. And you know, there's a lot of that happening now. So that's a good thing to always keep, uh, keep up on. And then we've got Nova, um, which helps you um, check out um, updated Helm charts and container images, right? Yep. Um, so this is great. If you want to run this against your cluster, you can put this in your CI CD. Um, what if you have a lot of clusters that you need to run this kind of tooling against? Like, how would you do that? Great question. So, I mean, both of these obviously have JSON output. So if you really want to ship your, your JSON structures somewhere else and then deal with them on your own and, and parse them and put them somewhere together, you could totally do that. That's totally an option. Uh, we do have a commercial platform that enables you to pull all of this from multiple tools, multiple clusters into one place. So Fairwinds Insights is our commercial SaaS offering. Uh, and what we provide is basically an agent that runs in your cluster and it's running cron jobs of these tools. So it's running a cron job that's Nova and it's running a cron job for Pluto. And so we can look across, um, in this case, we have you know, dozens of clusters here um, and we have several different reports, including Pluto and Nova, but also including Goldilocks and CubeSec and Polaris. And we pull these all into one place. And so we normalize all of that information into what we call action items. And so we can look at Nova action items and Pluto Nova action items, as is pertinent to our, our conversation here. And we can see that, you know, we have a cert manager Helm chart and there's a new release available. So this is running 1.0.1, 1.2 is now available. It's going to give you some remediation information that's not necessarily available in the CLI. Uh, and then again, like I said, we're going to do this across a lot of different clusters. We can also um, go from here, we can um, go ahead and create a ticket. So we can hook this up to Jira, create a ticket for it, um, and we can assign it to people. We can also add automation rules um, with JavaScript that allow us to, you know, if a uh, an out of date Helm chart happens in this namespace, uh, send a Slack message to this channel. Or if we see an out of date chart out of uh, a deprecated API version being deployed, we can create a Jira ticket for this team um, specifically in this place. So it allows you to really run this across a lot of different clusters and operationalize the information that you're getting out of these tools across a large fleet or um, a lot of namespaces or a lot of teams that are deploying to these clusters. So if you need to scale up with these, Insights is a great way to do that. I think you're muted.
All right, Zoom. Jeez. All right. All right, thank you. Sorry. Uh, I was muted, but now I'm back. Um, so awesome. Uh, I think that um, we've already talked about, um, about insights and we have a white paper available. Yes. Kubernetes, the good, the bad, the misconfigured, how to find misconfigurations. Um, so we're going to talk about in this white paper, you know, some of the things we talked about with detecting API versions, but also security misconfigurations, cost misconfigurations, reliability issues, like not setting probes and things like that. And then also, you know, going further with that into policy enforcement. So, you know, business related specific policy that you need to enforce across all of your workloads. Um, all of these things you can obviously do with insights, um, but we have the white paper here and uh, Dave will be sending out a link to everybody after the event, along with a link to the recording. Uh, so we should be covered there. Awesome. And then do we have one more uh, polling question? We do not. We do not. All right. I so don't think. We're good. Dave, right. do we have another polling question? I don't believe so. Great. Okay. No more polling questions. And I don't see any more questions popping up in the Q&A. So you all are good. You're experts. You're going to like go and use Pluto and Nova to make your infrastructure like awesome and secure and impress everybody around you. Show it off at parties where your yes. friends all ask you about Kubernetes things because those are the friends we have. Apparently those friends I have. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's my life. All right. Thank you everybody for attending. Thank you, Stevie, for hosting. It's been a pleasure. And all the uh, typing. <laughs> Y'all have a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you.